While tape measures may seem simple, there is a lot to know about them that make them far more useful. Features some people don't know about, and once you know, will make you far more efficient with your tape measure. We'll cover the basics from reading, different styles, usage, and we'll go over the more complex, including guide marks, architectural scale, hidden features, and much, much more. Let's go over reading a tape measure. When you first pull out your tape, you'll usually have some markings, including the brand, Roman numerals, and other markings. The Roman numerals are the declaration of conformity. In other words, accuracy. One being the most accurate, two the second most accurate, and three the least. Unmarked tapes do not mean they are inaccurate, it just means they're untested. The M with a square indicates the year of manufacture. For example, M23 means the tape was manufactured in 2023. This is important to know which standards or parameters the tape was made with based on that year. Each year, there are changes and improvements to these standards. The CE mark indicates that the tape measure conforms to all European Union regulations that apply to it. In the case of a tape measure, that means the European Measuring Instruments Directive. The temperature marking is simply the temperature at which the accuracy of the tape measure was tested. This is taken into account as temperature can contract and expand metal, but this isn't really something we need to be concerned with. Now, reading inches is simple. You have one inch, five inches, 20 inches, 46 inches, and so on. But reading fractions of an inch isn't as simple. In between an inch, we have 15 marks, each mark indicating a 1 16th of an inch. But let's ignore that for a moment and just look at the longest mark, which is in the center. This is exactly half, which means 1 half inch. The next longest mark are placed at a quarter of an inch. So four of these spaces fit inside one inch. The next longest mark indicates one eighth of an inch, meaning that eight of these intervals fit in one inch. I think we get the gist of it. Finally, we have the smallest mark, which are at one sixteenth of an inch. 16 of these intervals fit within one inch. There are also tapes that have the fractions written on them, which can make it a little bit easier to read. The next common mark on a tape is foot marks. Every foot, you'll typically have an arrow or color mark that marks the foot. That be on one, three, five feet, and so on. We'll also often encounter foot inch marks. For example, on this tape measure, we have four six, four seven, and so on until 411. This number indicates that the next inch mark is X foot by N inches. For example, the 4A indicates that 56 inches is four foot eight inches. This other tape, for example, also indicates foot inches right above the inch mark. For example, 31 inches is two foot seven inches. Outside of the USA, you'll also have centimeter marks. This is a much simpler system of just centimeters. Each centimeter made up of 10 millimeters and one meter made up of 100 centimeters. Though meters are not usually marked. Most tape measures will have a mark at 16 inches and subsequently every 16 inches after that. This will either be marked with a color or a square or a diamond. This is important and very useful when framing walls known as 16 on center, which is the most common. Studs are typically placed 16 inches apart on center, and this mark makes it easy to mark the locations of studs. This mark is found including at four feet, which will be different from the marks on other foot marks, indicating it's a 16 on center mark. And in this case, the indication is with a diamond in the arrow of the four foot mark. We also have a 19.2 inch mark, which is also marked every subsequent 19.2 inches. This in fractions would be an uneven 3.5 sixteenths of an inch, which is why the 19.2 mark sits forward of 3 sixteenths inch, which is something to take into consideration if you're shooting for ultimate accuracy. Now this mark is also used in building and is sometimes used for framing, though it's more common for floor joists and roof rafters. Other common spacings are 12 inches and 24 inches, though these are an even one and two foot respectively, not requiring any additional marking. The blade tip on a tape measure is designed with many things in mind and any good tape measure will have play in it. Now this means that the blade is loose on the rivets and as janky as this may seem, this makes your tape measure more accurate. This play accounts for the thickness of the blade. 
So when measuring by pulling, the inside of the blade inward is the accurate measurement. However, if you're measuring by pushing against something, the blade moves in, making the outside inward the accurate measurement. The blade will typically have a rectangular hole in it. This one is simple. It's just designed to hook onto nails. The blade is also intended to be strong enough to mark wood. If you forget your pencil, you can just push the blade into the material, making a mark. Some tape measures even have a serrated edge. Many tape measures now come with magnets at the end. This can come in handy, especially when working with metal. Though in my experience, it could also get in the way, magnetizing to things you didn't intend to. Some blades will extend upwards and are able to hook on the top side as well, which is a welcome feature on any tape measure. Measuring inner corners can be tricky, and many people just bend the tape measure and push it into the corner and try to estimate what that length is, but you can't really see the exact distance to the corner. For example, try to guess the distance here. Now remember your answer and we'll come back to this in a second. There's a better, more accurate way to measure inner corners. Most tape measures will have a mark on the side where the belt hook is. This will indicate in inches and or millimeters the length of the body of the tape measure along the bottom edge. This allows you to measure in between spaces more accurately. For example, here, we set our tape measure flush and bump it to the other end we want to measure. We read the measurement, in this case, 20 inches and 7 16 Then we add the amount on the back of the tape measure, in this case, two inches, for a total of 22 inches and 7 16 of an inch. Now this should be a more accurate measurement. And let me know, is that what you estimated with the previous method? If we cut a piece of wood, we could see that it perfectly fits at 22 and 7 16 inches. Some tape measures will have an architectural scale. These are simply just scaled down measurements to find the equivalent life size value. So in this case, we have a 120 scale and a 150 scale. This is usually used for architectural plans, though we have another example most people could probably relate to a little better. Hot Wheels. These little cars are scaled down to 164, meaning that if we multiply any of the dimensions of the car by 64, we should get a life size value of what it would be. Now we don't have a 164 scale, we have a 150 scale. This excavator, for example, is a 150 scale toy, which we have on our tape measure. We can use this, for example, to measure the cabin size and see what it would approximately be in life size scale. In this case, we have 1.5 meters by 1.7 meters, which seems about correct. Now, tape measures are tightly and precisely wound, so do not ever disassemble a tape measure, as chances are it will never go back together. So if you're like me and you like to take absolutely everything apart, just don't take apart your tape measure, as tempting as it might be. You also want to make sure that your tape measures at least agree with each other. In other words, if you have a bunch of tape measures, do they all measure the same measurements? You'd be surprised how often you get a bent or stuck blade or other factors that are changing your measurement by fractions of an inch. And a fraction of an inch is enough to throw everything off and cause a lot of headaches. So just make sure your tapes are reading correctly. We've put countless hours into making the best content possible and keeping it free for everyone. That being said, your support is a crucial part in keeping us going. We've put some serious time into designing a new flask and mugs, ensuring a quality product and a quality prints. So if you're interested in buying one of our products, thank you for keeping us going.